All right, welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, investor, and all around raging capitalist. And in today's video, we're gonna continue our tour of the Wasabi wallet. Uh, and in today's video, we're really gonna focus on their embedded coin join functionality. Uh, if you haven't watched the last Wasabi wallet tutorial, go ahead and pause this video and open up in another tab the link I've provided in the description down below. Uh, which will go through the installation of Wasabi, the whole kind of setup, um, and then ending with generating your wallet. And so all I've done since then is I have funded the, uh, the account, which I show you how to do in that video. Uh, and so we'll pick up where we left off today. Now, in terms of uh, CoinJoin itself, right, this is a concept that goes back to the early days of Bitcoin, and it's laid out in this excellent introductory thread from OG Greg Maxwell back in 2013, where he provides the kind of motivation for why this is important. Uh, and as we alluded to in the last video, it really comes down to two pieces. One is just general privacy, right? I mean, individuals should value privacy. Um, I, I don't want someone nefarious or otherwise monitoring everything that I do with my money. Uh, you know, privacy is a foundational part of, uh, of one's freedom. And so, you know, today we have all these kind of emerging coin surveillance uh, firms and technology that are gonna become ever more sophisticated. Uh, and so it's really, really important for those who value privacy to recognize that the blockchain is a public ledger. So it's pseudonymous, right? Um, it's not full anonymity because if enough, you know, if there's enough desire, uh, let's say you buy, you know, Bitcoin from a popular exchange and you move it to some other wallet, that's very, very easily traceable. Um, with very, very little effort and kind of pressure, you know, some actor, whether it's a government entity, whether it's a, you know, scammer, whether it's other malicious actor, can very easily trace those coins to your individual identity, right? It, it really wouldn't be that, that hard to do. And so CoinJoin helps address that uh, by pooling together multiple participants' inputs or coins into a single transaction. And you can see this uh, very simply visually in this kind of cartoon version of it. But essentially what this does is it severs the link between the inputs uh, i.e. the different coins that participants are contributing to this transaction and the outputs. And so it becomes very difficult to know who owns, with, you know, the ownership of these different resulting outputs and connecting back to the inputs at the uh, prior part. Uh, and I'll go through a little bit more on the mechanics of, of CoinJoin in just a moment. The other piece as well that we talked about is about fungibility. Uh, this is a crucial property of money and while fungibility is perfect on the technology layer of Bitcoin, meaning one Bitcoin is exactly the same as another Bitcoin, that is true on the kind of protocol level. But when you add the fact that we as humans are interacting with this protocol by owning and transacting and spending Bitcoin, uh, that fungibility kind of falls a little bit away. And so we went through the example last time of imagine, you know, you have two Bitcoin uh, in your wallet, one of which could trace its, or, you know, some of its origins all the way back to uh, the, um, you know, activity around the Silk Road marketplace, right? Which is always a, an example that folks use. Um, and so, you know, it was used for illicit activity, illicit defined by someone in some group, but suffice it to say that certain folks could argue that that Bitcoin uh, is kind of less valuable than another one that hasn't been involved in activity that some groups or people would call uh, illicit, right? And so, you know, in some future state, imagine if, um, you know, uh, a third party where you're trying to spend your Bitcoin prevented you from spending the, the first Bitcoin uh, for those reasons. That would be an example of, of censorship, right? And so to tackle both of these uh, problems, as Greg's laying out, uh, CoinJoin is something that can help us. And so with that foundation and motivation for why this is really important, let's go ahead and jump into the basic mechanics of CoinJoin. 
uh, as well as the walkthrough for how to do it in the Wasabi wallet. In this video, um, I'm not gonna go into the kind of gory depths of you know, the mathematical proofs behind the you know, cryptography that goes into uh, these coin join transactions. That's certainly beyond the scope of this video. But what I am gonna do is encourage you, if you're interested in that, to go to the couple of links I've provided in the description uh, below. One is the uh, Wasabi documentation that actually goes through step-by-step of uh, the zero link protocol. And so the zero link is a fungibility framework that uh, is embedded in Wasabi wallet and it uses uh, Chaumian, you know, blind signatures to uh, ensure that no participants at any stage in the process can kind of connect the dots of who owns what. And that includes the uh, Wasabi wallet uh, coordinate, coordinator server. So how this process works is Different participants will contribute and register inputs or coins to this kind of overall uh, coin join transaction. And then what's happening in between is the uh, coordinator server is verifying these different inputs, um, but they're also blinded to the outputs that are being uh, also created um, uh, you know, kind of anonymous, anonymously behind the scene. And so the server is gonna sign off and the initial participants will receive their same coins back, uh, minus of course, you know, transaction fees. There's also a very small coordinator fee uh, of 0.003% um, times the anonymity set, which we'll get into in just a moment. Uh, but suffice it to say, that's kind of what's happening under the hood at an extremely high level. I'm also linking you uh, to GitHub where you can go in more detail on the zero link framework uh, itself. So definitely check those out. Uh, they're very helpful resources and I, I think it's just fascinating how this works under the hood. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump directly into Wasabi Wallet itself. All right, so we are back in Wasabi Wallet. And so where we ended up in the last video was we had gone through how to generate your wallet and then how to receive funds using the receive tab here on the right. And so what I've done uh, since then is I have funded the wallet, as you can see here at the top right with 0.118, uh, et cetera, et cetera, Bitcoin. And so this is now uh, confirmed on the blockchain. And so what I can now do is come over to the coin join tab and I will see my Bitcoin here. Now, I only have one row, but let's say that you uh, had multiple transactions that you've sent to your wallet. As we discussed in the last video, you would see those individually listed out as uh, individual UTXOs or unspent transaction outputs. And so this is a really nice part of Wasabi Wallet is that it allows you to be very thoughtful about managing uh, your your coins, right? It's not, you know, your overall wallet address is one thing, but that overall uh, balance is comprised of multiple UTXOs. And we'll talk about in a moment why that's so important. So I see my uh, the amount of my UTXO, and I also see this privacy designation. So it's basically a scoring mechanism. And you'll see this is kind of a red X currently, uh, anonymity set. Uh, one, and this this shit, this is essentially default. This basically just means that it hasn't been uh, these coins haven't been mixed yet, and so um, that's that's kind of all that's saying. And you'll see how that changes once we actually do the coin join. And then this cluster is just a label that I attached to the uh, transaction when I received these funds to this wallet. So what we can do from here is uh, we can select these coins. Um, and you have a couple options. You can select a particular type, um, you know, coins that have not yet acquired the target anonymity set, uh, or you can, you know, select everything and it'll show you the selected amount that you are uh, requesting. Now, before we execute this, let's look over in the bottom right. And so this has a target anonymity set of 50. And so think of anonymity set a little bit like, you know, at least how many 
uh, participants in this transaction you want to have. And you'll then also see that there's actually there actually is a minimum amount of 0.105, uh, et cetera, Bitcoin. And you know that's with the price where it is, that's, that's obviously not uh, negligible. And so that is one restriction on this whole process uh, is that you do need a minimum amount of that. And then in addition to the normal transaction fees, there's also this coordinator fee that the Wasabi uh, coordinator server will earn, uh, which is 0.003% per anonymity set. And so multiply that by the anonymity set we're targeting of 50, and that gets you to you know 0.15%. Uh, and so still very low, um, uh, you know, kind of um, cost there. Uh, particularly when you consider the benefits of what you are uh, what you are doing, um, you'll you'll then see a couple final pieces of information. You'll see that the registration ends in a minute thirty five seconds, so it's kind of this countdown. And then you'll see there's this number of registered peers. So this is the number of folks who are uh, registering coins for this next coin join transaction. And it will either execute once 100 uh, participants are reached or at the end of this registration. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and put in my password. Make sure I do it correctly. And I'll say NQ selected coins. And you'll see it is queued. And you'll see that has updated here uh, as well. So I have queued my uh, Bitcoin for the CoinJoin transaction. Now, you know, keep in mind that this number as well may, may fluctuate a bit uh, as the registration countdown goes. And so if someone, you know, took their coins out or, you know, disconnected their computer, et cetera, um, while those coins were queued up, you also have the option to dequeue your coins but you'll see that this is now registered. And so I am all set. And so we'll come back once this is executed and we'll see the results. All right, so uh, the transaction is completed. And as you're doing that, you'll notice that the, the kind of tracker here will update. Uh, it'll say connection confirmation, and then um, you know there'll be the signature process. And so you'll be able to kind of track the, the progress, it took a couple of minutes. And here is the result. And so I now have two different uh, UTXOs, as you'll see. Um, there's 0.105, uh, et cetera, Bitcoin that has been mixed. And you'll see I now have this privacy designation uh, anonymity set of 65. And so that means that there were 65 participants in the, um, in the transaction that uh, I participated in. Uh, and so that's great. Now, you'll also see that there was this other amount that was returned to me as change. And that can happen given how the structure of the mechanics work. Um, but basically, you'll see that this amount has been uh, returned to me as, as sort of change in the transaction. Uh, and this still has a privacy anonymity set of one. Um, and so this is really nice. This allows me to now um, perhaps spend my, uh, my fully mixed coins without mixing them together with the coins that have not been mixed. Because again, that would erode your, your privacy if you're mixing um, mixed and unmixed uh, coins. But that's basically it, super simple. Um, if you compare the kind of total uh, wallet balance to before, uh, that transaction ended up um, costing 0 0.0002 uh, Bitcoin, which is in current prices roughly 12 bucks uh, US or so. so Pretty, um, pretty efficient, highly worth it in my view uh, for what you're getting here. Uh, and let's leave it there for now and go ahead and close the video up. All right, gang, congratulations. You've done your, uh, maybe your first CoinJoin transaction. And so just to recap, we went through the motivation for why this is really important for individuals that care about privacy. Um, we then went into a very high level overview of how the mechanics of CoinJoin work. Uh, the specific implementation of CoinJoin that's embedded within Wasabi, which uses the kind of zero link fungibility framework uh, and Chaomian kind of blind signatures. And then we went through the step-by-step -step walkthrough in Wasabi Wallet, which 
as you can see, was pretty simple, right? They've made it uh, really, really nice. And this becomes just an excellent way for you to take your privacy and coin management to the next level. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. We'll go ahead and leave this here for now. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. Uh, make sure you're subscribed, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the great content coming in the future, I'm coming out with weekly videos every single week. Uh, and with that, uh, without further ado, we'll leave it there. Uh, remember, as always, every sack counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.